Hello everybody, welcome to the uh, round of 16 match between Jonza and his Nurgle and Cybernite and his Bretonians. Joining me in the booth oh, is Purple oh, Chest Glorious. Until oh hello, victorious. really looking forward to this one Jim. I, I think it's going to be a cracking game of Blood Bowl. I will defend. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting. Um, first of all, thank you very much Papa Piccolo for staying fantastic for 36 months. I've just realised why I was shouting because I've got this on too loud. <laughs> it's like on 50% of my headphones, it's like blowing my brains out. <laughs> Thank you very much, Pat Pickle, for staying. to us. <laughs> staying fantastic for 36 glorious months, that's three years, also known as nine cool fever pregnancies, and we've instantly got a Kaz. Um, yeah, this is interesting. Purple Chest and I have both picked different winners for this, and this is pretty much Split pretty kind of 50 50 down the line for the predictions competition in Dio's Discord. And yep. uh, yeah, he's only got one tackler. This is the weakness of the Nurgle. He does only have one tackle. And of course, he's not well. Now he could pile on actually once he's, uh, you know, once he corrals the peasants because he obviously he's not going to want to foul with non peasants. And uh, so, you know, he, he's going to be able to pile on uh, more or less with impunity. Um, so he's not really scared of the fouls, and yeah, I don't know. There's good players in there. They're re they're really good players. Every every single blitzer is blood step with tackle, yep. which is wonderful. Um, he's got a guard there. He's got a mighty blow. He's frenzy. He's got uh, leader. He's got sure hands. They've all got tackle. I don't know. I was going to say that. Good yep. guards. It's it's real nice. But then you look at this generic Nurgle team, even missing two Nurgle warriors. <laughs> <laughs> and it still has Claw Mighty and Guard and Claw Pom and Guard and yeah. Just yeah, it's better. still absolutely filthy, isn't it? It's got a, a Claw Pommer, um, it with, also comes with the uh, the addition of uh, Jump Up and yeah. Tackle. It's got three Claw Mighties, uh, each of which comes with Block. The two Warriors have Guard on them as well. But yes, it is two Warriors short, um, so perhaps a little down on power, though there is a plus up um, Beastman. And he's left a gaping hole. He's left a gaping hole, PC. Can you believe it? Look well, at his misposition. misposition. I can believe it, Jim. Um, and it's <laughs> why I picked Cyber. Um, the Nurgle team did get uh, quite efficiently banged out by Crucifer in the last round, losing those two warriors. Uh, but then, as we discussed just before the stream started, Crucifer really knowing that you know just reaching the next round isn't really what he's after. He's after Chalice wins. Uh, I absolutely understood why. Played very conservatively after his apothecary went, let Johnza back into the match, and uh, with some nice dice, Johnza did manage to steal that win. So, what he's got left is it's effective, it's it's aggressive. But whilst he coached reasonably well in that in that match, um, I also saw some a few little problems, a few little worries that would make me think um, that Cyber might be able to get on top of him here. And Cyber, of course, not only a very nicely built team, but every time I've seen him coach Bretonians, to me, almost no finer exponent of Bretonians that I've seen. So uh, I High really think he indeed. can do some good things here. The downside, of course, is that he's still got a Bretonian team and Bretonians are trash. Yes, that is his big thing. And he went for that surf there, I don't know, I think I preferred going through here, going through this gaping hole. Like, you know, if, if, the, if the dirty player rotter had been one square at the left, it's completely yep. impenetrable. Yep. Um, and instead, he left this chance and he didn't take it. He went for this surf, which didn't work out. And now, if uh, if Jonza fills in all these four squares, he could surf his own rotter. <laughs> yes. Um, I mean, Cyber, again, knowing what he's doing, has put the places in, pieces into the right places to stop the counter surf. Uh, even if it was possible, the stand firm piece where he's put it you know, makes it very, very tricky. Uh, but theoretically, if you could get a rot around the back and onto the line, um, you could surf the, the side stepper that's right on the side, but it's very tricky to do. That would be insanely difficult, yeah. You um, need, like, I, I, you I understood that. why he went for the uh, the surf, but I think if you're going to go for it, if that's where you see the advantage, you actually needed to commit to it slightly more and maybe even throw a first half re-roll in. He does come with three, so... Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. This is nice, isn't it? Now he can completely isolate these two, uh, these two peasants. He's got a, he's got a bribe cyber, but obviously if these guys can't even get near the near people to foul, they're not going to be. That's utterly useless. So, I, think, I mean, I do uh, agree with you. I would have here. tried to push through that very lonely-looking rotter and tried to get a couple of knights into the backfield. 
Yeah, I like uh, that. Because then, even if you're not threatening the ball carrier, and you know the ball carrier was always going to reach safety, it just means they have to be more careful about the back side of the cage. Uh, you know, make sure the ball's protected from every angle. It just gives them more to worry about. Yeah. Whereas, yes, um, we've you know pushed a rotter onto the sideline, which we'll have to try a four plus to get out of it. But it's not really a piece that um, that you can imagine Johns is that worried about. Knights have a very, very quick. They can get back into position fairly instantly if they really need to. Yeah. There wasn't a wolf frenzy, God. No, there wasn't. There wasn't. How what I really like from Johnson so far is um, is this uh, slightly rowdy um, Nurgle's beast moving up into the backfield, into the opponent's backfield. Not making that three dice, though. Oof. I did say there were just some weaknesses that I thought would come through. I think that's one of them. I mean... Oof. If you're going to make it six, if, if, if you've got strength six against three, why not just put one more little assist in? Yeah. I'm not sure it weakened the ball position to move the uh, the piece just in front of it, one square sort of northwest, if you like. Mm. Almost as well protected, but yeah, a three dice there. But we didn't see it. Um, however, that piece, you know, under huge amounts of threat now, stuck on two claw mighty blows. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get my practice in for tonight. <laughs> Three hours of saying <laughs> yep, it's gonna be shattering. <laughs> I agree with you. I think these uh, these two lonely peasants look in, uh, in enormous trouble to me. Yeah. I think they he... don't hold out hopes for their future. No, I think he's gotta try and get them back into the game, right? Just so he can foul as much as anything. <laughs> <laughs> also, just raw numbers. I mean, even terrible pieces. I always keep an eye just on the raw numbers because a terrible yeah. piece can lock up a great piece. Um, so it still does have value. No, oh, he relied on Dauntless. He could have put in one player to make yeah. it a one day if Dauntless failed. He didn't. Cost him the re-roll, but he uh, he got the lovely the powers on the uh, second set to dice. Yeah, no, of course it was against him who was uh, who was stand firm. So it was only double powers doing anything. If he failed, uh, oh, look at that. Oh, really? And really importantly, it doesn't get that uh, that piece off the uh, the Nurgle next time. It, it stands straight back up, and that blitzer is still held. Yep. <laughs> now, the, the blitz piece and the stand firm piece have to try and get away from it, don't they? No, oh, that's the... Oh, wait, 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 oh, he's not hitting the, He's not hitting this guy. He's just going to foul it. That's how he's going to get away. He's got a bribe, so he can oh, foul okay. with a non-peasant. Yep. He's failed. He's not got away from it. He has not hit the claw mighty. It's an absolute disaster. Yeah, it's um, I, I wasn't crazy on the plan, and the um, the outcome of it hasn't been particularly positive either. But it was great getting to punch that guy in next to the peasant because now he's in trouble, isn't he? Because now the peasant can start laying into <laughs> laying the boot in. Yep. <laughs> really got to defend his claw pommer now. And yet, interestingly, it seems the beast he's more interested in defending. Um, I mean, the beast is a nice to have, but it's really not not that key to how I think this Nurgle is going to get it done. No, and he's got I'd have been much more interested in defending the claw pommer and, and trying to bang these peasants out. Yeah, he's got to protect the ball, and he's got to protect the claw pommer, and he's you know he's got to do all of it, hasn't he? This is a little bit tricky now. It's certainly not an easy turn. Oh, yeah, just remove people. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've heard that helps a lot with this game. Yep. He can run around and get an extra hit now. Oh, he's got stand firm, so we'll just... <laughs> I will disregard that. But I guess you blitz and then you can screen and still protect him a little bit, but... Oh, it's a bit rough, isn't it? It's a bit rough. You do have to worry about these knights coming for your ball carrier. Lovely ball carrier as it is, it isn't that well defended. It, it's very good at movement, not so good at, uh, at retention. Yep. I don't like blitzing with a guard in case you get the ball down, but he doesn't get the ball down, but he does get stuck on the stand firm. Maybe. Yeah. I guess yes, it is a consideration guard. against wrestle pieces. Um. Yeah, to be fair with the stand firm, you'd rather get a warrior. You'd rather get a warrior stuck on stand firm, but you would rather get the beast wrestled. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't you? So it's it is actually yeah. interesting having having the wrestle on the stand for. And 
he had to try and shore up there with that plus strength piece because otherwise yeah. the knight was dodging in on a four plus and uh, knowing cyber knight that's something he'd be quite happy to go for for a one die on this ball yeah yeah it's interesting isn't it because obviously the ash five is great at dodging through and scoring but you'd probably yep. rather have it on the strength four two heads most of the time wouldn't you Yes, I was a little surprised that didn't uh, that didn't become the ball carrier as it's the sure hands piece. But um, and then the you know the agility five as a handoff option. Oh, he did the two. He did the two tackles on dodgers. Wow, <laughs> that's, uh, that's not the way I would have done it. But it's it. He saved so himself it, it, a GFI. Woo! Yeah, it's it's great. That player's now in a much better position. Um, if you're prepared to take that five plus three plus instead of a four plus three plus, you you do gain positionally from it. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, the Frenzy can't surf it. He could have just gone 4-3-2, couldn't he? And then been, he would also been a square further up if he wanted, if he'd done that way. Yes. Yeah. Which is what I would have done. Yeah. But who can say whether that's definitely 100% better than a 5 plus or not? <laughs> we all can. Yeah. Well, I can say there's a there's a site that specialises in exactly that. <laughs> we all can say that's 100 percent the wrong move. <laughs> well, I mean, if I'm going to say something nice about it, and I'm going to try to, um, the fail state was less bad because the first yes. dodge, if you fail it, you are off the edge at least. Yes. So perhaps that was a consideration, or perhaps it was a misclick. <laughs> Oh, push into guard. Yep. Fails Dauntless doesn't matter because he had guard of his own. The guard does get wrestled. And he's going to yeah, stand He's not afraid to come rowdily after these claw pieces, is he? Which, I mean, I, I, I like. I think if you're going to get on top of this team, you, you have to be not frightened of those to some degree. Yep, one assist foul here. Double one. <laughs> Classic gym foul. At least there wasn't a third one for the bribe. Yep. Yeah, it wasn't full gym foul. <laughs> that would have seen a one on the bribe as well, yes. Now, do you risk the jump up? I guess you'd be a little bit greedy here, don't you, and risk the jump up, because that's his, his mind yeah. blow frenzy guy. That's a pretty nice play to hit. You've got the guard in. Well, gets the knockdown. Yeah. And it is only a 2 plus. I mean, it's. Uh, I think a 2 plus is usually fine to risk. I also wouldn't have hated him throwing the reroll at it if he wanted to. Again, it's a first half reroll. You can afford to use those more rowdily. Um, well, I didn't um, love that piling on. Oh, I, I love piling on. <laughs> and again, with, with claw paw man jump up, it, it you know, it, it's incredibly hard to resist the pile on, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And he can't really foul you very well because he's only got one peasant left, and he hasn't got a bribe anymore. And you can hit the peasant away, so like, it's really hard for him to uh, to get a foul on this guy now. And who cares if you're basing somebody or not? Just pile on, pile on every time. The numbers don't lie, and they spell, they spell disaster for Bert's getting piled on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I suppose you're right. I, you know, Claw Pom particularly, the numbers are very good. Uh, Claw Mighty, the numbers are less good. Yeah. Uh, sorry, um, uh, Pile on Mighty, the numbers are less good. Yeah, yeah, I knew you meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The armor seven. AV seven. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. It's, it's it's bonkers. It's mad OP. <laughs> it really, it genuinely is pretty crazy. Always was and always has been. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that said, if it's in the rule set you're playing, it's in the rule set you're playing. You won't find me complaining about it, but I'm also not going to pretend it's in any way fair, reasonable, or balanced. Yeah. <laughs> Now, this is a, a somewhat aggressive move up the side. I'm not sure there's anything that can get round in front of it, but mainly because the beast is tying up so many knights right now. But Yeah. A couple of real nice players on the beast. <laughs> no, hold on. It's definitely more balanced than the new mercs. They are completely and utterly, insanely, ridiculously overpowered. <laughs> like somebody was on acid when they wrote those rules. 
is not an exaggeration. In fact, that's probably been kind to whoever wrote those rules. I mean, I've, I've had a quick look at costing up, um, and you can get this on any roster. A dirty player, sneaky, get stunty. And if you're prepared to dump his passing stat, which you obviously should be, to get a slight rebate on him, and that's before you perhaps dump his agility, which you probably wouldn't need either, um, I think that can come in at about 70k as an with, inducement. With DP plus two? Yep. <laughs> so, wow. Um, we're going to have to see if anyone or any format of the game allows them. Yes. Um, Yeah, how can you on earth? Like, it's always going to happen, right? If you do any any rule like that where you let people get discounts for removing stats, it's bound to get broken, isn't it? And it just obviously is broken because no one needs agility or, or bloody passing access if they're going to be doing something else that isn't passing or dodging. <laughs> and who, who's going to be doing any passing in Blood Bowl 2020? I, I've yet to find anyone that goes, oh, I'm really looking forward to the passing plays I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. I want uh, Cloudburster and Fumble Ruski as my two first skills. <laughs> yep. Uh, hello, Calcium. Yeah, they finally unnerved DP. So how it works, I'll do it briefly. There's uh, a number of different players. You can have up to three mercenaries total. You can have two stunt, up to two stunties. I think up to two, like, elves. Up to two linemen. Um, up to one blocker and up to one big guy. Um, I and so obviously you know in com in in, com in combination three max and then they've all got like a very reasonably priced cost they've all got like kind of slightly worse than basic stats um, of those types um and then you can give them extra stats you can give them skill packages um you can give them skills and you can crucially you can reduce their cost by reducing their stats, and obviously it's very, 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 very powerful to remove people's passing abilities and remove people's dodging abilities, and sometimes removing their movement abilities if all you want them to do is smash the fuck out of people with Mighty Blow plus two and foul the fuck out of people with Dirty Player plus two. There you yeah, go. Yeah, but if I'm keeping a stunty behind my lines ready for that key foul, why does he need strength? Or armor? Or passing? Yeah. So you can just literally remove or it. <laughs> yeah, and not even that much movement, you know. So you can just oh. you can remove loads of them. Yes, exactly that one, Frost Lord. That is what we believe to be the case. Now we're all going to have to you know, have a good look at it, a good read of it, and then throw it in the bin, ignore it, and carry on with our lives. Yes, <laughs> yes, because only somebody completely insane would program that into Fumble or Blood Bowl Three. So, I guess Krista can do it as an option, right? And then not have that option allowed. Yeah, I mean, it, it, exactly. I mean, whether it'll end up in the competitive divisions or whether he just programs it in as an option for leagues and things. Um, yeah. And it'll all be down to whether he feels it's you know, a compulsory part of the rules or not. Uh, and if it is just for leagues, it won't be a huge priority to get done. But, I mean, those sorts of things don't... I mean, I don't know coding, but it, it doesn't look that difficult to add in if he wants to. Yeah. Whether Bleed Blood Bowl 3 is going to have it in or not, none of us know. Yeah. Hello, Peppered Biscuit. There are certainly rumours of Cyanide working a lot closer with Games Workshop on this version than they ever have before. Yeah. Yeah, um, so that makes it... The live service and DLC being the way that games, you know, make themselves financially viable nowadays. It wouldn't amaze me if Cyanide want to keep adding in just more and more and more and more and everything they can. Yeah. Including 18 different flavours of ball. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic for Moradam. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's an in the no joke there, if ever I heard one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point, Gerion. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. I don't know, Gerion. If I was them, and if I had a good, close working relationship with Games Workshop, and knew that... I mean, I've heard rumours of a... A chaos teams the supplement, and when I say rumours, I'd be amazed if it isn't coming. Um, and you know, we're expecting hopefully reworks of the vampire and the chaos dwarf teams. I would have built a game ready for me to add those things in on top as paid for DLC. Yes. Um, 
certainly they've been very public about the fact they don't feel they have monetized uh, the Blood Bowl games they've made so far in the way they should have done. Yep. They feel as a community we have more money to give them. They're right. I mean, look how many hours so many of us have put in. Yeah. Like, obviously... And Blood Bowl nerds tend to be completionists. If it's there, they want it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, if, you'd have to be... Like, as much as we all bash cyanide and stuff, you'd, you'd, you know, if you've put in <laughs> as many hours as a lot of us have, you'd, you know, you wouldn't be good them sending them some pennies and that for some extra things, would you? Of course. No, I, you know, I also want Blood Bowl games to be successful, so I, I don't begrudge them making money. I think that's a reasonable attitude. Yeah. So it's really crazy that they haven't done anything, but then they're pretty incompetent. <laughs> uh, Peppered Biscuit, I have some news for you. Um, the corn that you are aware of uh, have been saved by the NAF for online tournaments. Those still exist. Um, but I would see that as a very temporary situation. Um, lots of people have no, this seems to be definite, but until it actually happens, we can't say that 100%. But we are fairly certain to get a completely reworked, entirely different corn roster. Uh, if the Games Workshop rumoured you know, Teams of Chaos supplement uh, comes to pass. Yes. He's got the 1D pal. Unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, he hasn't got many players left, has he? So you like, can't begrudge him. No. <laughs> no it's, um, I mean, the Nurgle plan's worked fine so far to some degree. I mean, it's it's mostly KOs, though, so that's not going to hugely worry Cyber Knight at this point. No, yeah, he's, he's had great dice for the drive, but not for yeah. the match. I wonder if he'll consider not scoring. <laughs> oh, let's not begin that madness. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I can't help it. Oh dear. Oh dear. Hello, Alliances. <laughs> yeah, the fact that they've got the uh, you know that they've got the chosen of X rule very yeah. heavily implies that they're going to have chosen of like, and they've got chosen of Nurgle. The you know they're surely going to have chosen of Corn, chosen of Slanesh, chosen of Siege, and uh, yep. you know like they've got Skylar as a as a star player as well so he's surely going to be like you know he did exist and now he's currently not in so he's surely going to be chosen of corner only yep. so you're going to have you know things like that yes I'd, I'd be amazed if that isn't what's happening um, reasonably soon mm. i.e. probably the next thing after this death zone supplement yeah that makes sense as well there's Warhammer 3 isn't it Total Warhammer 3 has been tremendously successful Yep. And uh, that's that's bringing. Well, sorry, no. Total Warhammer One and Two have been very amazingly successful. So Total Warhammer Three is focusing on chaos. So yes, it makes a lot of sense. And if you wore a suit and were an executive at Games Workshop, just how excited do you think you'd be about both Blood Bowl and Total Warhammer having chaos releases at similar times? I would be jizzing in my pants. That sort of uh, cross-product promotion is what suity people dream of, isn't it? <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's, That's a good point, but I think Games Workshop will, will have their head screwed on rather than cyanide. I think they're, they're, they're pretty good at making money, right? They don't care about the rules or anything, you know that doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> they just know that doesn't matter. What, what yeah. matters is the models and everything. So bringing yeah, out models like for, for corn and everything while Total Warhammer 3 is coming out makes perfect sense. The and actually, rules. to some degree, if the rules are terrible, that kind of suits them. They would love to release another rule set in three or four years' time, sorting it all out. <laughs> yeah. And we'd all buy it. So, yeah. Yeah. who's the fool? Probably us. Yeah, exactly. That's it. They know They know their audience. <laughs> okay, Aurelensis, I will bite. Um, Space did have a tiny point. I can think of edge case scenarios where if there was seven or eight KOs, including their three or four best players, and I had a wizard and I really felt I could turn them over in the second half, if half or less of those came back, there might be some times where not scoring would be better. But it's it's a real edge case scenario. The vast majority of the time, bang it in, get a touchdown, and then work out what happens from there. Because that's how you win games. Wow. Yeah. 
How old Scurum? Oh baby. Scurum in the house. Hyped as fuck for JFW WrestleMania. Yeah, you win the game by scoring more touchdowns than the opposition. But yeah, of course, there, there, is, there is like a one in a million chance of, of scoring not being a bad idea. But Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying never because there are times where Space's point would have been very valid. Yeah. Um, I've had a look at that specific game state and it wasn't on his side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What the mod's this? Oh, Gatenic Snipe, that's pretty great, yeah. Okay, he's finally got away from that beast, and that's also allowed him a hit on the ball. Wow. Ah. wow that was but lazy, two dice did not, reduce a good, not produce a good one. Wasn't that lazy, just allowing him the three plus if, with, with dodge, if he, if he, like, just relying on the tentacles to stop a 2D? I thought, he, yes. why didn't he make a cage? He could have made the cage, and he just didn't. He put the dirty player down here, what a lunatic. Because I mean, not all of his decisions are good ones. Like, not what I would I have done. This at the start. <laughs> not, not what I would have done. But who can say if it was good or bad? But I literally just looked away because I thought, oh well, that you know, he's making the cage there. Yeah, it's all nice and safe. He's getting nearer the beast. He can get that back involved. Oh, he hasn't bothered closing his cage. <laughs> wow! And all of a sudden, he's got a problem because that's a blood stepper on the ball, and his, yep. his jump up pommer is up based, and he, he's got to try and clear. I mean, it's solvable. You can you can very easily make sure it, it's off the uh, off the ball carrier, but it's going to leave you really short to um, to build your nice cage within range of scoring next turn. Exactly. Yeah. Suddenly, with incredibly few Bretonians, Cyber has put him in a tough spot. Yeah. Of course, being agility five, it should almost certainly just ignore the fact that it's based <laughs> and dodge off. Yeah. On a one in thirty six fail. Yeah, um, I mean that's the right answer here. <laughs> yeah, Let's... probably. I mean, this guy isn't going to do much else. Also, this warrior, so he, he could just move this warrior down, and uh, these three guys make a cage. He can come in there. He can blitz, and then he can. Uh, so he can. He can do it. He can do. He can be safe. He can two do. I mean, it, it absolutely it should all be fine. Yeah, yeah. So he's doing. He's being safe. Wonderful. You can have a lovely little cage there, made for him in scoring range. <laughs> yeah, help, help, yeah, rolling apples is so fucking annoying. By the way, you know what's happening later? That this is happening later. Glorious. Yes, looking forward to that. So I think one of the two will uh, will not be less of a problem for a while, and that's good news. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's a game where a match where I think basically all of us win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm joking, obviously. Um, and I'm just hoping it's a better Jimmy Fantastic Wrestling show than last night. Well, of course, we had the. Um, I mean, I, I felt you did a really good job there of uh, you know. The, the the bit before the glorious bit at the end of the film where the hero wins, <laughs> you know, where everything is terrible and looks like it's just wrong, <laughs> because Jimmy G won and so did Flicky Flack. Which <laughs> yeah, fair. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Yeah, and so, yeah, I, I, I watched Real Mania afterwards, and I've got to say, not as good as JFW Mania. Well, I say real. I watched Double Double E Mania, not as good as JFW Mania. <laughs> In my opinion. Yes, one and a half hours help. <laughs> So does he stick a foul and he's got reserves, hasn't he? Has he? I assume he does. He's only got one. No one probably don't stick a foul in here. You want to make sure you've got a, you've got enough players. He's got a mighty blow frenzy. He can easily remove guys himself.
Yeah, Rowan Cesaro was great, wasn't it? Strowman tearing the cage was good. You know, that was alright, wasn't it? The big yeah, guy with Styles was good. It's all a very nice, secure position for the Nurgle. Yeah. I think the drive's been reasonably successful. Other than leaving that cage open, which, um, you know, did allow two die on the ball, which is not great. Didn't need to be done. Um, I mean, I thought the Beast took up a really nice early position, and sure enough, it's been it's been really dominant there, hasn't it? It's done some good work, mm -hmm. considering it's not that great a Beast. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty fucking good Beast, to be fair. Block guard stand firm is what you want, isn't it? Like, he's got the yeah, skills okay, that you yeah. want. Oh, yeah, all right, fair enough. Yes, it is a good Beast. <laughs> um, it's not it's not exceptional, like he doesn't got plus strength or you know, claw as well as those three or dodge as well as those three. Yes, I mean that would make it yeah, exceptional rather than just good. So okay, it, it is a good beast and it's done good work there. Um I think if I was Nurgle I might be a tiny bit disappointed I hadn't got another injury or two. Yeah. Um KOs will be, you know, a worry as to if they all come back. Suddenly all I've removed is a single peasant. Yeah. But it's I've got the touchdown. Um, I've been in a fairly dominant position. There was only one turn I was under a lot of threat. I think that's all fine. Yeah. And he's got two 3Ds here, hasn't he? Um, so he can, he can bang someone out with a claw palm. Maybe bang someone out with claw mate. Reroll. Reroll. Oh, okay, c -Sabs. Well, whoever's telling you that... Um, that you shouldn't have guard on your beast of Nurgle, you should have break tackle, probably is not your friend. <laughs> wow. I, mean, I can understand why, it's just not something I'd really ever want to do, so. Yeah. Yeah, no. I've okay, now this time we are seeing a nice 3D, so that's good. Yep. You could say, you could say go stand firm first. Some people like going stand firm first. I think they're wrong. But some people like going stand firm first on their beast. But you've got to have guard, haven't you? Like, it's got to be guard and stand firm as your first two moves. It's got to be. Yes, I, I can't see anything beyond guard and stand firm I'd want as a normal on it. Um, I might take break tackle as a third normal, but I'd still be really hesitant about using it. I mean, the, the range of movement is so low anyway. Um, if you've got stand firm, it should more or less always be where you want it to be. Yeah. Only one out of three KO rolls, so Cyber could be in a lot of trouble next half. Yeah, he needs he needs those to really fire. I mean, he's got a team, but it's it's not the team he wants to be coaching. There's, uh... It's Protonians. <laughs> <laughs> that is the team he wants to be coaching. <laughs> but it's uh, it's two of his guard blockers, uh, you know, a stand firm one and uh, a Rog one. And one of his lovely knights. So the three pieces missing are, are three really good pieces. Yeah. And the replacements, crucially, are either nothing or a crappy, <laughs> crappy peasant. Like, that's the thing, isn't it? It's really horrible when you're replacing these guys with peasants, even if he had the bench, which he doesn't have much of a bench, does he? He's got a bit, bit of a bench. Yeah, I mean, he needs two of them back to be at the full 11 anyway. So yeah. he was he was one down on the average there. He really needs to get, um, you know, slightly over the average and at least have 11 back. And any two of those back, and this team's going to look a lot better uh, yeah. because all three are really nice pieces. So, yeah, the next set of KO rolls are really, really key. Yeah, that is, uh, that's really bad, isn't it? Yeah, that's a good point, Bagarian. This is a movement eight sidestep blitzer with catch, and he's put a tight LOS, which is terrible. <laughs> well, yeah, the one turn attempt is definitely on. Yeah. It's genuinely terrible. Well, I mean, who's to say if it's right or wrong, Jim? <laughs> Yeah, that's not good. You 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 split them. It's that simple. It makes it slightly harder. Yeah. Though, I mean, he has at least put the you know the three FAs on the line, which makes um, throwing the ball up incredibly difficult. Uh, it makes uh, makes even hitting them just that tiny bit harder. So there's there are some things he's done that that are moderately helpful towards stopping this one turn attempt. 
Yeah, he's he's done the bare minimum, hasn't he? He's got well, no, he hasn't. He, the bare minimum is three tight rotters and no back line. But once you back line <laughs> and put, uh, put wait, wait, what, 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 what? He's cost himself a push. He didn't. Oh, no. Yeah, that didn't. Just couldn't you have dropped the peasant in there? Or? Yeah. He's put himself in the tents now as well. Okay. Oh, okay, he's got another hit there. Okay. That's because he needs the remaining hit on that yeah. warrior, having not taken the one before. But, I mean, I guess he had a plan in his head, and hence he's uh, he's going ahead with putting that into action. And yeah, okay. There is some good in that. I mean, changing your mind halfway through a turn like this is is usually a very bad thing. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So it all ends up okay, but he could have had the push already. Yeah, I'm, exactly. I feel we could have been there with one less push, but oh, that's a huge injury. <laughs> Massive. Even a remove, like even a even a KO um, or a regen, it makes it easier to catch the ball, doesn't it? He's catching on a five yep. now instead of a six. Yep. And of course, as so often with so many incredibly dangerous players on the pitch, it was a trash peasant that got hit. Yeah. Is it better to just pass it to this guy? I know it's five plus, but you got a reroll. I filled anyway. But I wonder if it's better to, ca to pass to this guy. Even I know it's a five plus, but you know, fifty-five percent of cash and then do the five plus handoff might have been better than the extra range band. Um, <laughs> it was just so horrific that you just need two nice dice. But <laughs> oh, well, he only got one of those KOs back, so he is at ten. Uh, but of course, that's slightly balanced by chipping that Nurgle's warrior. Yeah, incredible warrior out. And he's still at eleven, isn't he, Johnza? I didn't notice, but anyone uh, anyone looking at the the distance of the cup, how things move in the for future, uh, that warrior will be absolutely fine. It's back next game. Yeah, in the context of the game, a huge regen fail, isn't it? Yeah, it really was. Only got two warriors now. He's down to one warrior. Um, so if Cyber can if Cyber can stall this out and score, and he not you know not even on turn eight, if he if he can score at turn six even, mm -hmm. there's a chance of uh, defending, and then he can well, toss in overtime and maybe win. He's got a chance. I mean that said, we, as we've you know, seen before, there is that strength for sure hands for ball carrying. It's got two heads, so it dodges as if it's AG four, and then there's an AG five to send down the pitch and hand off to. So I really would be trying to score probably at the end of this drive, unless I'm getting on, on top of some of those pesticles, like I have the Rotters and oh, yeah. the, well, the Warriors. Yeah, I mean, it's just... When I was saying that, I was more like he's not going to get the chance to. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> but, like, you know, because obviously you don't want to score on turn six if you don't have to but I think you know the best case scenario is probably going to be scoring on turn six or something because I mean Brett's have the move and particularly because they tend to come with blodge and catch um, you know they, it's very easy actually for Brett's to do two or three turns usually yeah. um, but I think that's really counter indicated here the last thing you need is you know, I mean, it's because scoring isn't always good for you Jim I've heard <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would be taking some line of scrimmage hits, but really importantly, you know, there are there's the pestigors on this team still that can do you some harm. Yep. And not just with the hitting, but you know, they've got a couple of very nice ball handling pesties here. <laughs> yeah. And still three claw mices, of course. <laughs> Yeah, PC blindfold is uh, is just a JFW silly silly thing because he's uh, <laughs> because of his face cam looking like he's got his eyes closed sometimes. <laughs> so from that we went full blind fury. <laughs> and uh, yes, man, that's a very good point. If Johns hadn't scored, he'd still have the warrior. Yeah. <laughs> he'd be he'd be much more likely to lose though, I think. <laughs> this is my opinion. I think scoring in a game where the whole point is to score is generally a good idea. And yes. If anyone's watching this on YouTube and doesn't understand what the joke is, it's long and complicated, but trust me it's fun. <laughs> Sandwich. 
that's a good that's a good point champ no removals yet he really does want to chip one doesn't he this army he would, he would love to I mean the problem is is that he just doesn't have any kill skills yeah yeah his one mighty blow is, is out on the bench I mean, that said, it was a, a rookie peasant that killed the, uh, the Nurgle's warrior. Or badly hurt it, I should say, to be clear. Yes. So if you get enough hits in, you know, armor will break, but it, it breaks a lot easier with Mighty Blow, I've tended to find. Yes, yeah, so it's twice as easy to break with Mighty Blow. Ish. <laughs> twice as likely to remove, isn't it? Ish. Yep. Ish, yeah. In not actual maths, but close enough that it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, do you know what? I might have hit with the. Uh, you know how you hit this rotter with the uh, wrestler? I wouldn't have minded hitting him just directly forward with the uh, blitzer so that then the wrestler could have come round. Or, or hit him with it. You know, sorry. He hit with the wrestler, he hit him so that he could have got an extra block, couldn't he? He could have just pushed him back and then he could have 2D'd the uh, Pestigo. And I quite like 2 dicing the Pestigo because you don't have to roll the foul appearance. And, uh, yes, that's and they're the pieces that urgently, urgently need removing if this game's to uh, to end up a win. Yeah. I mean, any of the four, really. All four of them are, are horrible. Yeah. A lot of people like to say that they, uh, you should target rotters because it's so easy to kill them, but realistically, you don't care if you kill them, you only care if you badly hurt them. And yes. you don't really care about rotters, you care about the pesticors, they've only got four, and they're crucial for how, like, obviously these particular pesticors are somewhat slicker than average with a jump up claw pommer, a notch five, and a strength four. But even if they, even if they were lesser pesticors, the pesticors still do all of the stuff. And yep. they're only armor eight, and they don't have foul appearance. So even though they've got regen, it's not that. And they all blitz at strength four, except the one that is strength four, which blitzes at strength five. So they, you know, they're, they're also. I mean, they are multi-use pieces. I mean, I don't disagree with the uh, accepted wisdom, Jim. There is a time to come banging on the rotters, but really, what you're trying to do there is reduce the numbers of crap in the way to stop you hitting the good pieces when you want to. Yeah. Um, so if you can get through to the pesticles anyway. That's definitely a better value blitz to me. Yeah. I mean, there's obviously the argument of defenseless players as well, compared to protected, yep. but the Pestigors are so much better. Like, they're so much better that I, uh, I'd certainly value going It is ball. unlikely a Rotter ends up winning this game, whereas it's very likely that a Pestigor does. Yep. This uh, this beast has been pretty good, hasn't it? Just quite. It certainly has. I was just about to say that. I mean, we've we've seen Cyber not afraid to take the beast on with Dauntless, um, which as it's you know you you pay a lot for the four Dauntlesses on a, a Bretonian team, so you need to be not frightened to use it. But it it really hasn't paid off so far. This beast has stood its ground well and taken the hits. Yeah, it genuinely pains me having to rely on Dauntless, but yeah, you don't really have a lot of choice a lot of the time. But this stand firm, really paying off. And that's been huge so far this game and even when it's gone down it's meant it stood up you know in a position it wants to be in and consequently we see that knight having to feel it had to dodge off at the end having not got the power yeah classic classic werewolf blitz <laughs> yeah and although that's going to work a lot of the time if you're having to do that every turn it's going to fail it's going to go wrong I mean, let alone the fact that he had to dodge off tentacles, just the dodge itself. I didn't hate that one in nine. Sorry, that one die. I felt that was probably a good thing and needed to shore up that edge. Yeah. Yeah, it's, he's in a rough spot, isn't he? So he's got to do things that are a bit crap to try and have something a bit not crap happen. <laughs> yes. Or at least to stop more crap things happening. Um, yeah. And keeping two peasants on a, a mighty blow warrior with guard does seem like two peasants are going to get smashed in the face. <laughs> yep, right now he, he just can't afford to lose the numbers. Wrestle being good. No. 
mean, and stand firm like the combination, isn't it? Because yeah, yeah, really good. Oh, well, he doesn't stand firm, but um, there you go. I don't really like wrestle stand firm. Like I've never done it on my burp blockers, but actually here it does seem quite good because they are awkward to hit, aren't they? Because you don't want the pushes. Um, oh, and you don't want the one in nines. Yeah, so it's it's interesting. So even if you're if you're two dying, uh, you know, a wrestle stand firm, you're really looking for a one in three, which is roughly what uh, getting a power there is going to cost you. On the other hand, of course, if they'd both had mighty blow, then maybe they would have banged someone out and uh, they'd be winning this game instead of losing it. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that as well, isn't there, you know? Who's to know, Jim? Every time someone takes a decision or rolls a dice, a different parallel world is created where they did different things. And who's to know who's winning in those ones? Yeah. Because we're not there, I don't care. <laughs> How Magnus the Pink? Um... Yeah, it's uh, it's how it goes. It all right, thanks. Excited for JFW WrestleMania later on, and this game's been pretty good, hasn't it? This game has been yeah, so far good. it's been good. Um, I mean, John's as I, I think we did see in that first half some of those little, you know, some really good turns, and again, just a couple of turns where there's the odd move. You think, oh, that's not great. Um, yeah. Which is pretty much what I predicted from what I saw in the last game. Um, I think Cyber's done really, really well. But, uh, you know, birds have their own inherent limitations because they're not very good. Yeah. Otherwise known as the worst team in Blood Bowl. <laughs> Two. To clarify. <laughs> Two. In my opinion. Nah, they're not, okay, they're not as bad as Orcas, but... Nothing is as bad as Orcas. Yeah. Yeah, Ogres are. Ogres Although are Ogres did get a, a little chunk better with um, with Disposable as a skill, which is, of course, implemented on the other way of playing uh, Blood Bowl online easily, which is Fumble. Yeah. Uh, but not yet on Blood Bowl 2. Hopefully we're obviously going to have that, as it's now part of the core rules for Blood Bowl 3. Um, where once you bought them, you still have to pay cash to buy them, but no, uh, the uh, Noblars on Ogre teams now come uh, without any team value whatsoever. You, the only team value they'll ever have is if they take skills. Yeah. Very interesting. Ooh, oh, that's okay. Ooh. Yeah, I don't think it's nice to have been that good this half. I think Cyber's had some uh, some tough ones. So. He has, uh, he's had pretty crappy dice. He's worked quite well to create the, uh, the solidity he's got now on his line of scrimmage. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely fair to say, I think. Oh, he feels a dauntless. Gets the 1D power. Outrageous. It probably is Gary, and especially in, uh, especially in Blood, Bowl, uh, Blood Bowl 3. <laughs> well, not Blood Bowl 3, sorry. Blood Bowl 2020 with full inducement rules from Death Zone. <laughs> Look it. <laughs> well, yes. I mean, why why have actual players with their you know bloaty TV cost yeah. when you can just uh, rent in some mercenaries that are much better? <laughs> Eleven thralls. Let's go. <laughs> I was thinking hobgobs, but yeah, that's the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, no. I would go with thralls because I think they have a better star stars available. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Maybe uh, Underworld, right? Because Underworld get the snotlings. Um, mm, yes. Yes, riotous rookies and uh, and swarming. Yeah. I think Underworld are actually going to be secretly a really powerful team in, uh, in Blood Bowl 2020, Blood Bowl 3, Season 2. Call it what you will, it's going to be the same. Yeah. I know they lost a Storm Vermin and everyone's terribly butthurt about that, but <laughs> a gutter runner brings huge advantages in terms of speed, mobility and scoring. Yes. You can hire Glart in if you're really, really short of hitting power. Uh, line rats can still skill up in aggressive, horrible ways if you're desperate for more killers. Uh, and the addition of Snotlings on top of everything they've got just means, you know, put pop three cheap Snotlings on the roster and you can start with 14 players, or certainly 12 every half. 
yeah. with a cheap piece of crap you don't mind dying to throw away on fouling. It's it's they're gonna do some all sorts of stuff. Yeah. And that's a good point by uh, impetuous lad. Do you re-roll that? Um, yeah, maybe not. Right? Maybe he should have thought about not using a re-roll at all this half. But on the other hand, he probably still thinks he can stop cyber. So if you think you can stop cyber. But then you're putting all your rerolls to stop him, don't you? Like that's the thing. If you think putting in all your rerolls stops him scoring, yes, you'd then you put stop them him. all in. Um, I mean, I think he can. It, it's you know against Crucifer, he, he showed that you take your foot off the pedal against a team like this uh, with the amount of hitting power it's got. Suddenly, it can get on top of you very, very quickly. And remember, even when he's not hitting with Claw Mighty, and almost every time he should be, he's still got a lot of that about. Um, if you're hitting peasants, they're AV7. Interesting. But uh, not in the good way. <laughs> yeah, losing claw pom, like losing claw pom hurts them as much as losing the second blitz, I right? think. That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Although claw mighty is still very much going to be a thing. Uh, and with the, you know, lots of little tiny buffs to fouling, um, they're going to have lots of very affordable foulers. Even if you run out of snotlings, your goblins can foul. Mm. And they're cheap as chips too. So I do think Underworld, I mean, they're going to be a glass cannon build, obviously. You'll still be able to get on top of it and, and smash them out. Uh, but if you don't, you might find it's happening the other way. Mm. One claw might have one one turn, yeah. They might still be too expensive. It might still be ogres. Ogres or snotlings might be the best team. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, might be the best team if if you allow nerfs. Well, yeah. I mean, particularly ogres because you'll have the towers of power. Your uh, your noblars will be free in terms of team value, and you can spend all of that extra that you're not spending on those on some lovely mercs. It uh, mm -hmm. yeah could be a very very effective build. Without having to try particularly hard, you know, just afford what ogres you can and stock up on uh, some crappy noblars. Yeah. Okay, so we've stabilised the drive. We've got the ball reasonably secure. Though the front edge of this uh, this drive is still quite based. There is zero the is penetration. Still in a really though. handy position, isn't it? Yeah, just no penetration though, is there? That's the problem. No. No. You want to see some penetration from Bert? Always I want to see penetration, Jim. <laughs> yes! <laughs> of all things at all times, but particularly Blood Bowl. Um, I suppose what we have done is we've prevented the Burts getting over their halfway line so far. That's that's not bad as an objective yeah. for nearly halfway through. Yeah. That is a nice stun, yeah. Nope, there's a nice removal. Cheers! And I think we're. Uh, are we seeing the Apo on that? And he's already used his Apo, used it first. Yeah, sorry, it was already gone, wasn't it? Yeah. Now right, I look well. Beast Ball. Maybe. Do you think he'll go Beast Ball? Some people like Beast Ball. What do we mean by Beast Ball? Beast ball. Beast to ball. Yeah. Beast yes, ball. I, I, I don't hate that. <laughs> uh, I mean, as you said, it's got block, it's got stand firm, and uh, and then it can be used as the fulcrum with its guard. So, what's it? It may not do very much itself. It can be key to how that everyone else does things, can't it? Yeah. It's okay, he's got he's got a dauntless and, and stuff, but. Oh, Lemon, I, I, I can't just endlessly do little meme -y things at the end of every stream where I pick a slightly rude word or something other people have done and take the piss. <laughs> um, I, I do enjoy that. There will be more of that. But no, I'm not going to do an in-depth review on penetration in Blood Bowl. <laughs> just, just so that you can titter along. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah. No. Although now that I've said it, I might. Because <laughs> <laughs> it does sound quite funny. It does, yeah. <laughs> and I've got a schoolboy sense of humour too, so why not? <laughs> uh, maybe one day. Let's leave it at that. <laughs> Hello, Rick. Slick Rick in the house. No doubt looking forward to taking on EAB. Well, who wouldn't love grappling with a multi armed robot from the future? <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, Moridan. Think what those hmm. extra arms could do to you. <laughs> oh, baby. Look at that as well. Moridan, there's a new emote, tier 2 emote, just for Moridan. Glorious. I mean, not just for Moradan, but kind of just for Moradan. <laughs> that is fantastic. Pretty of course, cool. I haven't waited for Jimmy to uh, honour me with an emote. I've just gone and built my own. <laughs> well, well, I say that, Jimmy built it for me because <laughs> I'm terrible at all things technology, and he's a really nice guy. Uh, secretly, don't tell too many people that. He wouldn't like his image ruined. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I'm living a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. How how is a man of flesh meant to beat a robot of iron? Uh, I'd have been uh, I'd have been watching Terminator One on repeat for the last couple of days, Rick. If I were you. <laughs> yeah, he had to put the reroll there, isn't he? He's got it. He had to take out the beast. Le beast. And I mean, maybe that's going to happen. You know, perhaps we'll see Sean Bean run in and then scream, come with me if you want to live. <laughs> That'd be amazing. <laughs> yep, no knockdown. But he's got to go anyway, hasn't he? He's got to go. He's on turn 13. He's got to go. He's he can't. Go. He can't go. Got to move. Got to move, Nitro. <laughs> like he can't, though, can he? Famous meme from the uh, American version of Gladiators there. Ah, glorious. He can't, he can't, he can't. Yeah, he hasn't followed, so he's just... Oh, he's he can't potato back. this. I mean, he, he needs to try and find those... Oof! Wow, Jim. Oh. Disaster. Beast Ball doing the biz. Yep. Making him take that dodgy blitz. Not even off tackle there. Outrageous. And now this position is deeply, deeply horrible, isn't it? <laughs> yep. I didn't religiously follow Dragon's Den, no lemon. Um, what I liked was, I like the, the, the more stupid, if you can believe that, the more stupid version of it, which is uh, almost sugar, isn't it? What's that? The Apprentice. I enjoy Apprentice. The Apprentice. I, I, you know, You're I, fired. Yeah, it's just fun, isn't it? It's just a bit of fun. Don't you come in my boardroom saying you were good. <laughs> you was rubbish. You're fired. <laughs> Buy my phone that you can send emails on. Your gran will love it. <laughs> Pretty good squirrel, yeah. Yeah, and there's only there's only this blood stepper in the way, isn't there? And he's got Oh absolutely. I mean this ball needs recovering right now and that AG five has that all over it. Uh, and you can just go wandering through on a series of twos. Yep. I like this, I like this push because he gets to free him up. What current okay, no. <laughs> Gets yeah, to free him up, whatever happens. Now he gets to push him onto his claw bomber. Oh, fuck off. Ugh. Are you really doing that? You're really doing that? Oh, my God. Oh, and he wow. didn't use block. Oh. Is this really happened? Wow. He tr Yeah, it really happened, Jim. You're not having a dream. You're not David after the dentist. What That's the That's true. That's the, the real world that happened in. What the f what the actual fuck is that? He's got a blood step, but he's the only thing in your way from getting the ball. And you use your blocker on him, and then you don't even take the fucking wrestle. Oh, my God. Yikes. Did I miss him using a reroll earlier in that turn? No, he didn't use a reroll earlier in that turn. But he could have just, just wrestled. He just literally chose the ball down. No, no, the... Um... The Bretonian chose not to wrestle, and the Pestigore didn't have block, Jim. Oh, the Bretonian's got block! <laughs> the Pestigore chose not to re-roll, trusting that the uh, that the Bretonians would wrestle. And Cyber Knight went, well, sod you, that's the end of your turn then, I get my ball back. <laughs> that's 
that's even better. <laughs> yeah, isn't it? Isn't it just? I mean, better. Of course, where we mean worse. But yeah. Wow, I did warn you that Johnza was, you know, some great turns, some a little shaky. Um, that was a decision I don't support, Jim. No, no, especially after putting in the reroll for double skull earlier in the drive, right? Yeah, yeah. You've Some you can afford to take. That wasn't one. That was a such a key swing turn. Ball available, AG5 unused. I mean, I didn't even love the fact he was going for those hits. I'd have no. been trying much harder to prioritize getting things around that ball and getting the AG5 to it. Yeah. Instead, it looked like he was quite happy just to go for the damage and then see if the ball was available at the end of the turn. No, and they're not re-rolling that, but trusting that the uh, trusting that the blocker would use its wrestle is just absurd. And look at this double surf here. <laughs> now, having said that, he, he deserved a little better than um, than both of them getting knocked out because one of them was Claw Mighty and the other one really wasn't. Yeah, and he's also getting he, double surfed because of it. Well. Yeah, but you don't get what you deserve in Blood Bowl. You get what you rest from the dice. I think he did deserve that because that was terrible. It, it was a bad Genuinely decision, yes. Terrible. Yeah, genuinely Yeah, it terrible. really, really was. He could have pushed him away. He could have got a three dice blitz on this blood stepper, which is the only thing in the way of him getting his edge yeah. five, getting the ball, and instead he just did yep. that. And now we've removed two of those really <laughs> important testicles that we talked about being key to this. Yeah. <coughs> Regen does not fire on the surfed one. I think that... I think I'm right. Bretonians are going to win this. Now, I know he's left the ball, First of all, hittable, and secondly, right on that warrior that's on the sideline. Uh, but it's on a blodge sidestep, and if that warrior stands up, I feel it's heading off the pitch too. My God. What, from the jaws of victory, he's, he's managed to uh, to clinch possible defeat here. It's not even a GFI. I was going to say he's got a GFI, it's not even a GFI. <laughs> wow. And now he needs another huge momentum swing to put this back in the Nurgle's favour. He needs an equity shift, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, Bazza. Great way of showing how to blow a one game all at once. One terrible decision. Yeah. One lack of a reroll when he had one available. Yeah, and after he'd committed that reroll a lot earlier in the half. Like, that was the weird thing, wasn't it, right? Oh, he's not dodging. He should have dodged, shouldn't he? He should have dodged and cancelled this assist so he could dodge in with the edge 5 and 2 did ball with tackle. He's... Yep. He's not doing that. Yes, that. <laughs> But he's not. I mean, that's a two heads piece as well. It, it, you know, it sh dodging should be something it doesn't mind doing. Yeah. Wow. I just, I... It's not using your resources in the best way that, that you know they're available to you. That's that's the problem here. Yeah, that was a lot more critical than the dub skulls that he uh, that he rerolled, wasn't it? That was a that was lot huge. Yeah. That was the key swing turn. That was the turn where you you know you stopped this drive and you won the game, and instead. You've probably blown it. And that warrior does seemingly just stand up on the edge, which is... Yeah. He's got two now. Two is the, the only He's... way to stop the assist now, wasn't it? Or, you know, to get the uh, guard assist. Once oh, yeah, yeah. Charge. Yeah. So he's going for all the marbles with the AG5. I, I suppose that had to be done. Yeah. Now that he can't cancel the assist, he had to get the assist. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, Blood Bowl's not about what you deserve, so he gets the pal. <laughs> And now he's a 2 plus 2 plus from having the ball in hand. Can you do it though without a reroll? I could. I'm not sure he could. <laughs> well, Jim, I don't mind losing if the upside is winning. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of people, you know, they, they much prefer the safety plays. They'd much rather the opponent gave them the win than they took it themselves. Yeah, because this is pretty easy, isn't it? You just two deep blitzes in, picks it up. That's four, yep. five, six, seven. You can even screen with some rolls. He does go for it. He does roll a one. Oh. Oof. Well, I mean, actually knocking the ball backwards a square probably isn't the end of the world for him. Yeah. So I'm not sure that fail state was terrible either. Did he have a yeah? No, he couldn't have been that bad. Yes, perhaps T-Man. I, I hadn't counted the movement squares. It was uh, a go for it as well, and it was the go for it that failed. So it was three two pluses. Yeah, that may have slightly changed my thinking if I'd been coaching it rather than just uh, being pointlessly rude about it. <laughs> okay, why is that 
peasant stood up when that was going to be my assist for the surf. I, it hasn't done anything. It hasn't cancelled anything. It hasn't added much. I mean, it's given us a hit on a rotter that we wouldn't have had otherwise, but I'd have... I mean, I'd have taken that as a one die right at the end of this turn. I think he's going to and then, and then freed up that peasant for the to give me two die on the blitz on the side. I think but, he's going to just rely on Dauntless one d and then and then yeah, I think him. he is, and, and then run after. Yeah. But I'd rather do the one d with my wrestle piece, and then a two d if Dauntless fires. I think that was better. But yeah, I think it probably was. But, never but mind. it's worked. So it's fine. <laughs> He's rolled the dice. I mean, it, it, it's not massively better, I just think it's better. Yeah. Yeah, I agree, yeah. 1D and then get the system. Like, fail states wise, it's kind of better as well and everything. Okay, what, what, why are we hitting this rotter? Why haven't we screened off the AG5 with tackle yeah, from hitting liked... our ball carrier with two dice? That's... <laughs> okay, he's just going to dodge with oh, that guy. Cyber, I've talked you up. Religiously since the start. Okay, we're dodging out that. Well, that's fine then, isn't it? And we had a reroll to cover that. Yeah. Okay. At least we had a plan. Yeah, and that and that explains the one D surf and everything. So yeah, yeah, yeah. In retrospect, that's his plan is fine. Um, I still prefer mine, but it's fine. It, it's given him everything he needs. The ball in hand. The the AG five at least on somebody. Yeah. Uh, and the surf worked. So yeah, all good. Yeah. Um, still, still prefer my plan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and yeah, it's four two pluses to hit the ball, but still, it's just two pluses, isn't it? And I'm not having to cope with those chalice nerves, Jim. Exactly. The question is, do you go for it? Do you go? Do you go for the reroll here? Maybe not, right? Because if you've got no rerolls in overtime, oh, it's yeah. tricky, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, uh, no. I I go for it because you go for it, but I don't use the re-roll I think I've, I've still got my strength for two heads ball carrier I've still got my agility five if I get the ball in overtime there's still a lot I can do with the beast and my my remaining pieces which I'm going to have to try and be a bit more careful with <laughs> I can't believe he threw that Oof. It was, it, I mean, I'm still reeling myself from just how horrible that decision was. Really? Did he forget? Do you think that he didn't have block? <laughs> Maybe, yeah. I mean, I forgot. <laughs> I mean, in the High Elf game, we saw the, him forget that he did have block. <laughs> and used Wrestle against a blockless piece. Oh, well, there you um, go. Look. You and he could have just things. banged him. Yep. So perhaps he forgot he didn't have block. So the AG5 gets there because it's AG5. It was always quite likely to. He went all the way around, though, so that he would, would have to make a 3-plus dodge, and that's left him yeah. out of movement to, uh, to make the pickup. Yeah. He, he does have the 3-2 here. 3-2, 2-2, 2 3 But, of course, Cyber's now only got, you know, one turn to get there. Um, yeah. And it's quite a long way. Yeah. So now I think stick you definitely stick the reroll in with this guy coming for the ball, don't you? Yeah. I mean the problem is that that knight can still score, but it can't pick the ball up as it goes. So someone else is going to have to get the ball to it if it does go for it. Yeah, and he's done it. Yeah, two heads doing its job there. Now it's on the strength four, and now I think Johnza has once again managed to get that swing and get this game back in his favour. This is a really swing. tough position for Cyber. Yes, one turn, Johnny, and not an actual turn on top of the one turn, but real, actual, single turn. Huge equity shift. <laughs> massive. I mean, genuinely massive, yeah. but let's not use the word equity. <laughs> let's use the word ginger ninja. Thank you very much, Elliot, for the glorious word. <laughs> no one here buying a house. Rowdy. Now we can uh, we can get one assist in easy. The second one's a little tougher, but but doable. The problem with the second assist is it doesn't leave us a ball can a fetcher. Yep. So he goes in there. We wrestle it down. It's a lovely position for the ball to drop to. Now we've got a knight that can reach the end zone and another knight that can pick it up. Yep. Um, but the one that can pick it up can't reach the end zone, and the one that can reach the end zone can't pick it up. 
Yeah. Wow. Um, are we going for the handoff after two oh. go for it? Probably not. We're probably doing the three plus. Th oh. Yep, okay, that the wasn't the one I expected to go, but it did. Yeah, he's, he's, he wasn't on tackle. He wasn't on tackle. No, because of course that uh, that was only a single go for it. And there's the pickup. Now is it the pass? Is the pass? Yeah, the little the the cheeky three plus there. Three three, Ooh. and of course the catch fires, so that the two plus didn't count. The six on the second catch roll did. We're one one. We are heading to overtime. Oh boy. Praise the sun. Wow, terrible, terrible KO rolls for Cyber. But he's going to have another yeah, chance. He'll get another shot at them. As will, as will John to get this claw palm back. Yeah, the claw palm also failed there. Eight versus eight. <laughs> but advantage Cyber, right? Because he's going to have the three. But then he's got the claw palm. So, well, the claw mighty hits. Well, one claw mighty hit and one mighty hit. It's exciting. Very Ducky, exciting. it's been a really interesting game. Um, pretty well coached throughout. Fairly solid from both. Um, I think slightly better from Cyber, but obviously, you know, Bretonians being terrible has uh, has been a slight issue. Uh, Johns has had some fantastic turns, some really nice ideas, uh, but also just a couple of those turns where you think, "Wow, has he um, has he let his brother have a go this time?" <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant vessel. <laughs> it's been it, there's the main thing has been one swing turn is unbelievable. Yeah, I have no spoilers about that if you plan to watch the vod back. But there's a turn that you're. I wouldn't be holding a cup of tea as I watched it. <laughs> Unless you're in a Michael Michael Bear movie, <laughs> in which case you will love the shock. Dropping the cup of tea I, and it's smashing everywhere. Yeah, I, I, I never use the phrase "drop my bacon sarnie" because it, it, it would just make me too sad to think of a dropped bacon sarnie. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair to Swim, um, two of these cars were from Surfs, so yeah, and I don't mean commoners. <laughs> We he, although one of them was also from a completely naked peasant, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, it was. Yeah. Wow, these kill rolls are horrendous. <laughs> a shocking, truly, truly awful. But at least they're awful uniformly. Steve, Motti, why would one? I've never understood why people have uh, have bacon and then make it taste of other things. I mean, that's absurd, isn't it? Yeah. Now, I don't know, sometimes, to be fair, you know, like the odd greasy spoon place, I've had a bit of ketchup on and it's it's all right, to be honest. But uh, generally, when I prepare them myself, I don't have any kind of sauce on. Yeah, if the bacon's bad, then I will throw a little bit of red sauce in there. Brown sauce obviously is for heathens and criminals. <laughs> um, and those from the north. I mean, pretty much that's the same. I'd covered that already. Yeah. But... Uh, no, if the bacon is cooked well, which obviously is crispy, uh, just to the point where you can snap it in half, but not to the point where it's burnt, uh, then no, nothing is needed other than some nice bread around it. Perhaps just a tiny, tiny little bit of something that's uh, butter or margarine or a tiny bit of mayo in there, just to I mean there is a you know some lightness in the mouth that it's not too dry. Yes. <laughs> but if it's a nice soft roll, then it doesn't even need that. Even a little bit of bacon dripping can uh, can be that little bit of grease that you need in there. Oh, baby. Oh, I've got myself excited now. I know. <laughs> I'm all worked up. Uh, oh, what, what's this, Ducky? Ducky, Ducky, Ducky. Do Southerners ever dare go north of Hadrian's Wall, Jim? <laughs> Oof. Well, I mean, the Southerners rarely, rarely re uh, venture north of the Watford Gap into the north of England. Let alone the distant wilds of the uncivilized Scots beyond Hadrian's Wall. <laughs> yep. Though, of course, I don't want to be horrible about the Scottish. They have lost their prince. So, I'm sure we're all feeling that really deeply. That uh, posh, rich, racist man with nothing to do with our lives has passed away at the tender age of 99, robbed as he has been of so many good years. Robbed! 
It's no and age, we'll, is it? 99. We will Tragic. never hear his, uh, his racist banter, which I'm sure was all just good humour ever again. <laughs> What for is the Gaza Strip of London? <laughs> Fucking hell! <laughs> well, then you've never seen Bushy, or, um, or Tooting, or Lambeth, or Hackney. <sighs> Which make Watford look like the, the pleasant dreamland promised to you uh, when you are Dick Whittington heading down with your cat. <laughs> he did say some funny shit, though. What a ledge! <laughs> yeah, yes, I think that's, that's a reasonable take on the current national morning. There, Jim. <laughs> yeah, on a official trip that we pay for with our taxes to Papua New Guinea. No, asking if they still eat people, that's that's genuinely funny and not likely to cause offence. <laughs> oh, look at that! Does that bird still eat people? Wow. Holy shit. He's filled all three <coughs> well, regions. Just quietly. Yeah, regen has been as bad as Apo this, uh, this game, hasn't it? I mean, not that the region matters, right? Because he's losing anyway. <laughs> but, <laughs> yes, the region did fail. He's got to be wary of this edge fire still, though. He can come through and hit him, so he's got to stay a bit withdrawn, hasn't he? A bit of withdrawn offence here. <laughs> withdrawn carrier, at least. Yeah. So he stays, so he can only be based by him, which is fair enough. You don't care if you get based by Arch 5, do you? You care if the Arch 5 smashes the shit out of you. Now, the snow could be a factor here. The Bretonians, of course, having more natural speed, uh, slightly less worried about it in terms of position and things. I'm not sure anyone's going to worry about its impact on passing. I'm not sure anyone ever did. <laughs> no. But, I mean, if there was no, yeah, if there was no Blizzard, then uh, the handoff double GFI player is a lot more yeah. enticing, isn't it? Yes, no, you're right. Um, and, I mean, I think... The major thing Cyber Knight's got to be worried about here is is just finding a route forward that avoids that beast, isn't it? Yeah. Hell, without a Blizzard double GFI to claw on him wouldn't wouldn't look unappealing to some people. <laughs> Worth noting, of course, the claw are not only lacking block, uh, but also lacking one of its movement points. It is only move five. Yeah. Uh, built as horrifically badly as it is, that's probably why it got injured earlier. In its life. <laughs> I don't like it, Jim. I don't. I'm not going to pretend I do. No, yeah, I don't fair. mind Mighty Blow first. I don't mind Claw second. Um, at that point, you've already stated you're doing piling on third, aren't you? And then I guess that's why Jump Up comes as your fourth. But Tackle as the fifth? I... Gotta have block. I agree. Gotta have block on your main hit, haven't you? Dude, this wow, we, we don't mind a go for it in the snow using our last reroll, apparently. I get why he feels he needs to be on this, uh, on that file ahead of the uh, the handoff option. Oof. But a reminder that a handoff option is still um, still two go for its from the touchdown line. Yeah. Which in snow, it, it, even with a reroll, is very very spicy to ask yourself to do, isn't it? Yeah, I would have much preferred just uh, sticking the 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 rotter on him, and then that makes the catch a five plus, doesn't it? Unless you can blitz him off. Yep. And that does the same thing, basically. Yeah, exactly. But once you commit to it, you had to throw the reroll in as well. Yeah. So yeah, he's just going to move them both. This guy's totally screened up. 
So yes, I, exactly as I, I thought would happen here, Cyber's now just going to try and move to the other side and leave the beast behind. Yep, yep, committing the beast, exactly. I wouldn't mind blitzing one of these, uh, what's it called, peasants, and then sticking the beast on this other blitzer. I like I like that, yeah. rather than just sticking yeah. him on two peasants that aren't relevant anyway. I would have like blitz, blitzed one of these peasants, stick him on the blitzer, and then it's central. And it's yeah, I mean, I, I, I think Simon's going to be delighted it's stuck on two peasants. I'm not even sure he'll try and... Normally, if it's stuck on two, you'd try and dodge one of them off and let the other one stay there, but I might even just be tempted to leave them both and say, screw it, even if you knock one off, the other one's holding it there. Yeah, yeah. Because it's it's you know such a key piece to get isolated in order to move forward successfully here. Now that's probably the first time I remember foul appearance firing in this game. Yeah, yeah, me too. Wow, that's the one. Well, I mean, he's going to feel that was uh, you know a fair payback for the uh, the foul appearance firing, I suppose. Yep. And the fail state didn't seem terrible. If he if he went down there, it's only a peasant. Oh yeah, like it's fair enough doing it, isn't it? It's fair yeah. Of course, that piece the uh, Johnza has put block on, so uh, it was a three plus, not a two plus <laughs> for a reasonable result. Yeah. And now after GFIing there pointlessly, <laughs> it's now got to centralize the... again. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not pointlessly. As we said, it, you know yeah. that that handoff and two go for it was possible, just really unlikely to be tried. Yeah. I mean, that's a you know three plus with natural reroll, and then three plus three plus with a single reroll to cover them. I mean, the odds on that are pretty good, but I feel Cyber's in a stronger position than needing those odds to win the game. Yeah. And particularly now, with the beast over the other side of the field, uh, a rotter over there that's unlikely to be relevant, the uh, the lone warrior also somewhat isolated from where the ball is going to be next turn. Yep. And then that really important, very, very minor piece, but that stun on the rotter just allows him to be slightly overloading on the left flank as well. And he didn't follow there, did he? Uh, no. Like, I guess he was scared, but like... Scared of giving away the 2D, but then by not Oof. following, this guy's just totally free to run around, isn't he? And... Yep. And to base whatever he wants to base, which... I mean, I wouldn't even do that. I'd use the knight that he's just knocked over to uh, hit the rotter he's just hit, and then I'd have three, two pieces to come with the ball. Yep. Uh, but Cyber choosing not to. And if I got the POW, you know, I'd still have a couple of spaces of movement as well to be part of that screen. I guess what his play is going to be is blitzing with this move up guy, blitzing the claw pommer and uh, helping with him somehow. Yes, I don't. I mean, I guess we're not going up this turn. I would have been. I think with the uh, the rotter particularly marginalised, as well as the beast. Uh, sorry, the warrior mm. uh, marginalised as well as the beast. This would have been my turn to push up the left flank. And as I said, if I'd blitzed with that. Uh, that knight that was hit over and was on the ground, the rotter that the blocker just took down, a pow would have meant I had three pieces in my screen to push forwards and be in range. Now, I know an AG5 can still come hit me, but it, it, it can anyway. Yeah. And that way, this uh, this guard, these two guard um, blockers could have been around the ball, making it the best one die. Yeah. So I liked that plan, but there's still time. You know, I think Cyber's still well on top here at the moment. It's just there's still two Claw Mighties out there, and that can change a game very quickly. Yeah, I think he's. I think he's just got to uh, move the ball right first. Decide where the ball's going to be and move it first. And then hit, hit, take this hit with the. Uh... I still don't know why we're doing that hit, though, Jim. So, so that you yes. can blitz with this because he didn't blitz with him. <laughs> Basically, yeah. yeah, exactly, yeah, and it, I, I, and it looks like we are trying to build that screen I was thinking about, but now with less pieces and oh, less ability to do it well. Okay, this is all, this is all right. 
two, three, four. Yeah, this is okay. And now we do get that blitz that you wanted, if this works, which it does, presumably. Or are we just coming to? Are we not even bothering with a blitz? In which case, no, we are. We're doing a one die. Yeah. Which works, because nice things happen sometimes. <laughs> I don't think it was worth running all the way around when you could just hit them from down here and push them to there, but... Yeah, I agree. Never mind. But then in a, on a, a, a 2, instead of a 3, 4, 5 or 6 there, we would have been between it and where we didn't want it. So I guess that was why. Fuck off, Jimmy. Um, am I still allowed to say I hated that turn, though, Jim? Yeah, you it are, yeah. achieved, It achieved good things, but I felt my plan was a lot better. <laughs> Sorry, um, <laughs> in case you didn't get that purple chest, Dimmy G just did the versus Jimmy Spitz. <laughs> the next round replied with, fuck off, No, because I've got you silenced, so uh, obviously, because I don't want, you know, I don't want to hear ourselves back um, 30 yeah. seconds after we say things, so no, I don't get the, uh, the noises from your stream. Yeah, but it was brilliant. Fucking brilliant. <laughs> But the best laid traps sometimes work. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, fantastic. <laughs> Thank you, Bessel. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> it is Moradam, yep. <laughs> Right, so the AG5, instead of um, one, two, three, four, five, I mean, we could have based that. Oh, no, okay. I mean, we could have based that piece with the rotter, just to keep it slightly honest. We could have got a single die on the ball with the AG5. Um, instead, we've chosen to uh, push a blitzer back. Yeah. Um, He's done the GFI. But if you're going to do that GFI, surely you've got to follow the hit, right? And just hope they both work. I mean, I would and you would, but... Yeah, apparently no. So this is a... a yeah, this turn just plays itself, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. We take that hit first, giving us the assist on the AG5. We run the ball up. And then we've just got to free either of our knights, or even if we don't, we dodge off and hit the AG5. Backwards away from where the ball's gone to. Game over. Cyber Knight wins. I was right. And I'm glorious. <laughs> I was right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, as we've seen in this game, this could have gone either way. I mean, Johnza has had some great turns, some really nice ideas at times. But I did warn you at the start, there's a, there's a flaky moment in there in him, from what I've seen so far. Um, and I think, you know, next time in the Chalice, this is clearly a coach capable of getting here and may well get here again. He just needs to iron just those couple of little kinks out if he watches this VOD back. Yeah. Uh, and this could have been another glorious win. But what do you think about this uh, this uh, uh, purple chest? He could have he could have blocked with that blitzer first, right? And yep. then on a push... He pushes this guy and then frees this one up. But on a pow, he could have freed up the wrestler and took the wrestler. I think that was the play for sure, right? Because wrestling, yeah, yeah, I, I like that a lot. Um, if I could have got wrestle onto that agility five, because you know, agility five, you you can't screen it, you can't base it and expect it to be there. I mean, yes, you've still put two two pluses in, but that's it, two two pluses, and he smashed the ball. Now there isn't a lot of recovery options except you're hitting it with an ag five piece. <laughs> yeah. That said, there's not a lot left in this team otherwise. You know, I mean, I, I think the the marginalised uh, Nuggles Warrior had to be recovered earlier than this into a, a useful position. Yep. I think the Beast has been out of this drive since that first turn, and, and that wasn't great. It was overcommitted too early on pieces that neither of us thought gave great value. Yep. Jokes. <laughs> <laughs> 
Fuck off, Demi. Yeah, and hitting with tackle on a on a blodge side stepper. So the nice thing about that is it's going to be at the extent of his movement. So even if he knocks him over, it's then a three plus to hit wherever to, to get to wherever the ball is. Even if the ball, you know, is next to you, oh, he's because he's going to. Yeah, and there we are. It's the one. So. <laughs> he's cast. <laughs> well, it's worse than that, Jim. The team's dead. Yes. <laughs> Yes, it didn't he said, he Yeah, he regen to miss next game, but there isn't gonna be a next game for him to miss. Woo! <laughs> and Cyber Knight, I would say strolls on, but it's you know it's been work. He's had to put the work in, and he's got there. I'm surprised he scored there because I don't think that uh, there was anyone even vaguely in range, right? I think he still had a reroll. He could have like tried to get hits, maybe get a Kaz. You know. I don't know how many SPPs his guys run, but you know, maybe sure. there was a chance of just an extra little bit of SPP there. Um, yeah, but a, a long, tiring game. Still a claw mighty blow on the pitch. I, I don't hate scoring, but I, I take your point. He was so on top of that situation that there were perhaps a couple of hits he could have tried to take. Yeah. Nuffle finally giving him the Regan as one last F you on his way out of Chalice. <laughs> Thank you very I, much. I, I, enough, I don't know what the Fumble the United clan has to do with this, but I, I do take your point. <laughs> yeah, the Rotter MVP to add salt to the wound. Oh, and look at that. He didn't go for the extra SPP. And that lineman who uh, destroyed... <laughs> destroyed a Nurgle warrior gets the MVP. <laughs> well, he absolutely deserves it. Um, <laughs> that was a really important cast. Yeah, incredible. What a game! Well done, Cyber Knight. Well coached. Yeah, yeah, really nice. <laughs> Fuck off, Demi. Uh, our our clan Denota is F U M, but the clan is still Fumble United. <laughs> I suppose if you like, we could be the I can't say that we're still on YouTube, aren't we? Yes, yeah, let, let, let's let's end the stream. Um, so yes, thank you very much, Purple Chest, for the co-cast. Co and uh, thank you very much for watching, everybody. Uh, congratulations to Cyber Knight, commiserations to Jonza. And uh, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.